Hello everyone, my name is Adam Vox, and welcome back to another Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support tutorial. I'm posting these probably a little out of order as I'm having some issues with exporting the versions that I'd like to make. And so I apologize if these are coming out of order, but there will be a full playlist in the description below full of all Ubuntu 16.04 tips videos that I have posted or am waiting to make public. So check out that link in the YouTube card icon or the description below. In this tutorial, we'll be covering how to customize your Ubuntu 16.04 installation, because frankly, the default looking theme here is pretty boring. Now you can get to some of the appearance settings by right clicking and go to change desktop background to start changing the background, or you can access that, that appearance menu, which is, that's all it really is, by going to the system settings icon here on your taskbar and system settings. Now, you don't have a whole lot of customization like you used to, but you still have some decent stuff. So, you have a background setting, and you can choose from either colors and gradients. You can just choose the default color and gradient profile here. You can choose from your pictures folder. I don't have any actual pictures on here, so I can't do anything with that. And then you can choose wallpapers, and it has just some default wallpapers. So we will set that nice one there. And then you have launcher icon size. So we're actually gonna make that a little bigger here so that we can see it better on this 4K display. And then you actually have custom themes. Now by default, you have three themes. You have ambience, radiance, which is a lighter theme, and high contrast, which is purely meant to be kind of easy to see, although it doesn't look very good. We're gonna go with radiance. Actually, we're gonna go with ambience, the default for right now, but you will be able to download some other themes in a little bit. And then if you go to behavior, you can enable auto hiding the taskbar, the launcher here. I already made, I already posted a tutorial on how to move it to the bottom using the command line. And then you can choose if you auto hide it, whether it is popped up by going just to the whole left side or going to the top left corner specifically. And then sensitivity on how you actually, you know, how sensitive it is to your mouse being there to actually show you the launcher bar. Now you can change whether or not the menus for your current window is displayed on mouse hovering, always displayed, I'm gonna leave it as always displayed, or in the Windows title bar itself, instead of this unified taskbar here, or title bar here, I'm gonna leave it in the menu bar, but I'm gonna have it all automatic, or always displayed. So if I close this, and open up Firefox, then it's gonna automatically have the file stuff all up there, without me having to mouse over it. The only issue is it doesn't show the full name of the program, because it doesn't move that, because Unity is stupid. I'm just going to express that now. I really dislike this desktop environment for Ubuntu. Moving on. Now, oh, hello, yes. Now you can also scale up this, which I'm going to show you how to here, just because this is what I am doing. Uh, you can also scale Ubuntu a little bit to make it better on higher res displays, like I'm showing you. So I'm on 31 or 3840 by 2160, 4K, ultra high definition. I'm actually going to scale it 2.5 times, let's see what happens with that. All right, that looks quite a bit better, actually. We're gonna go down to just two. There we go. And then I'm gonna have to go back here to uh, change the desktop background, launcher icon size, change it back to, uh, let's do, I don't know, uh, 38, 34. 34 looked good. All right, so it scaled up a little bit. It's gonna look a little goofy as to how big it is, but that'll make it easier to see for you guys. Oh, right here. So if you go back to the appearance and go to, I skipped over this. If you go to uh, in a, uh, behavior, there's enable workspaces and then add a show desktop icon to the top, to the launcher. So that show desktop icon is right here. It just minimizes everything and then you can bring it all back. Workspaces are virtual desktops. So since I already have the Ubuntu software sender going here, what I can do is close Firefox and then hit control alt and an arrow, or that's not working in the VM since it's a VM and control alt is my key that stops the mouse from being in the VM. You can click here and select up, you know, you have four different virtual desktops here that you can move between, and that makes window management way easier. So I'm gonna open up Firefox in this desktop, maximize it, go back to searching for Ubuntu 16.04 themes, and then if I go up here, I can go back to my package manager installing apps and it just installed Oneko and themes. Now that's not all the customization you can do. If you pop up the Ubuntu software center here, which is this app store looking icon, 
you can search for theme, and you've got a few different programs that will change the look and feel of Ubuntu, but only for specific uh, desktop environments. For example, Plasma Theme Explorer is only for the KDE Plasma environment, which we're not actually running here on this version of Ubuntu. So you got to be careful what you kind of find. And then if you search for cursor, I'm kind of doing this as I go. Oneko, yes, yes, yes. Oneko is something really cool that I'm going to show you. That is a great customizable thing. This is something I've been looking forward to for a while. Click install on that. That is going to be great in a minute. It, it, it's a mouse that chases your cursor across the screen. We'll go ahead and open up Oneko here so I can show you what that does. See, it, it, it's really small on 4K, but it's just a little cat that follows around your cursor. Really, really cute. I like it. We go back down here to Firefox, see what Google has to say for us. Can't really see the cat on white background, but that's okay. If you want to install more themes and icon themes, you actually need to download Ubuntu or Unity Tweak Tool from the Ubuntu Software Center. So we'll go ahead and open this up. By the way, if you want to customize what icons are shown on here, you just simply like right click it and go to unlock from launcher. Sometimes when it installs apps, it's going to automatically pin them to this launcher here. Um, I'm going to leave that there. And then if you want to pin an, icon, er, an app that you have installed to it, you find it in your applications and tell it to launch and then right click lock to launcher. But I don't actually want to use Thunder, Thunderbird, so I'm going to close it. So we're going to go to the software center, search for Unity. Tweak tool. That's right there. Install. All right, it wants my password. Authenticate. And pretty much whenever you install software, it's going to want your password. That's how it goes. That's part of security. All right. Did it install? Yes, it's right here. All right. This is Unity Tweak Tool. So you can change a lot about Ubuntu here. So let's just start at the top. Unity specific settings, launcher. Behavior stuff similar to normal, but here's a really cool one. Minimize single window applications on click. So if I open up system settings here, it minimizes it. Whereas if I click this, well, I still have it. <laughs> All right, now if I click it, it doesn't do anything. It tries to, you know, launch it or just show you it. Now you can actually minimize it. You can change the transparency level of the launcher, which is really neat. I prefer it fairly transparent. You can change the color based on the wallpaper, a custom color. I can tell it to go green. Okay. That's really obnoxious based on wallpaper. And then you can tell it to go to position left or bottom right here. Now icons, you can change the animation, whether they're urgent or, or to pulse or wiggle for urgent, pulse or blink for launch. So here, if I launch a bunch of center, that was pulse. Actually, what if I take something that, there we go. See how it's pulsating there. Well, now if I close LibreOffice Writer and change it to blink, it just kind of blinks. So you can change that to your like. Uh, icon backgrounds are only shown on open applications only. You can enable or disable the show desktop icon and change the icon size as we did before. Search. General background blur is on, although that is still loading the previous background that's having trouble. Blur type, active or static, we're going to leave it on active. Uh, search online sources, we're going to leave that unchecked, you can search online stuff. You got more suggestions, recently used, enable a search of your files, you can customize all that. Panel settings, menu visible for one or two seconds, you can change the transparency level of that. Opaque panel for maximized windows, so now if I open it up. There we go. It's acting a little strange here. Simply because we have probably a VM going. You can change the date and time to 24 hour time or 12 hour time. And, uh, 24 hour time is 1549, 12 hour is 349, that's what I prefer. Power, always visible. I'm actually going to uh, display remain. Uh, there we go. So you, if you're on a laptop, you can dis display remaining battery life, which is really good. And then visible when charging or discharging. Since we're not, it's not going to show it. We're on a desktop. You can disable the volume icon. Kind of cool. You can tell it to show your name. Like old school where you have a little preview of your user. That makes the shutdown icons menu a lot easier to see. And you can enable or disable the Bluetooth menu. So you can go ahead and disable that. Switcher. Now this controls the key bindings for your window switching. So if you want something other than Alt-Tab, Alt-Shift-Tab. 
Control Alt Tab, etc. You have the ability to change your key bindings here just by clicking it and typing in whatever you like. I'm going to cancel that. Flip through windows in the switcher. You can set up quite a few little customized key keyboard shortcuts here. Display the show desktop icon again. Uh, switch between windows on all workspaces or just on the current workspace. Include or un or you know not include <laughs> include or exclude. That is the word. Minimize windows. Automatically expose windows. And then you can tell it whether to start the switcher or start it in reverse. Web apps integration prompts. Yes. This is for the weird, like, Ubuntu One and Amazon integration here. It's a, uh, I, I, that's their version of web apps on the desktop. It's just basically a web browser for built into the, eh, you can mess with it or not screw with it. You're probably never going to use it. I'm not. And then additional settings. Remember previous commands. You just kind of want that on in case you do something bad. Hold super for keyboard shortcuts. You can do super alt to invoke the Heads up display. And that will show you here. Oh, it's screwing with me, but it'll show you like numbers for the icons and things like that. Uh, here, let me make this window bigger. I cannot. Okay, so super will show the launcher. Oh, I see. Alt is what shows the heads up display, uh, which is just the little search bar. Execute command is Alt F2, which is just run a command. Put keyboard focus on the launcher, Alt F1. And then open first panel menu is Alt F10. I gotta be careful hitting these. And it'll open up the menus here. All right, let's go back to overview. Search, oh, we did all that. Okay, so that is the Unity section, Window Manager, General. You can change uh, keyboard shortcuts for zoom in, zoom out. Texture quality, good, fast, or best. I'm gonna leave it on good for now. Window animations, on. So when you minimize, you can change what happens when you minimize a window. This is kind of like the Compiz settings if you've used older versions of Linux. So I'm going to click it and, for example, Magic Lamp Wavy. Now if I minimize a window, it goes all wee! And then unminimize, we can make it, uh, or you can make them both random. Let's just make them both random. So then if I minimize it, it does something. If I bring it back, it does something different. Minimize it, does something different. Bring it back, does something different. Just does something cool. Then you can change keyboard shortcuts for closing, moving a window, or showing the desktop. Workspace settings, you can enable or disable the switcher. How many workspaces you have, you can add more. You can add three, you know, whoa. You can get a lot of workspaces going if you're going to use it. Choose fine for me. Current workspace color, you can change the little border that just identifies it. And then the keyboard shortcut for starting the workspace switcher, which is just what switches between them. Window spread on. Uh, Super W. Oh, okay. So that's the... Where it kind of spreads these and you can change what the spacing is so if i change it to 10 which is half of what it used to be makes them close together if i change it to 30 not having a huge effect right now icons on previews don't know what that's doing and there, there's a lot of settings here window snap you can enable or disable it entirely that's just kind of how it works in like ubuntu it's not or in windows it's not working at all at the moment that's interesting oh whoa 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 okay cancel Here's a bunch of windows that just popped up that were apparently open and I didn't know about it. Good old workspaces. Alright, so none of these are working. Oh, I just, nope. Disable. Alright. Enable. None of these are working. I don't know if it's because I'm in a VM. It worked on my laptop. But it changes how window snapping works just like it does in Windows 10. Hot corners. You can choose those. For example, if I move you, if you hover your, your like hold your mouse in the top right hand corner. You can tell it to do something. That's kind of how, like, in Windows 10, if you moved your mouse to one side, it'd show one panel. If you moved it to the right, it shows another. Or Windows 8. Um, all right, focus behavior, auto-raise, auto-raise delay. You can play with these, see what they do. Appearance, this is what we want. We've got a few different themes here. Ad Adwaita? It's trying to change the theme here. Computer's freaking out, I think. There we go. That is the Adwaita theme. Everything's freaking out. So let's let's log out and back in. Yeah, it 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 encountered an error. Sometimes if you do too much to mess with the system, it in, or like the desktop manager, it encounters an error, and you have to log out, log back in, try to reset it, see if it wants to cooperate. It may just not like that theme. That may be the problem. Is it may just not like that Ida theme. 
If we pull Ubuntu Tweak back up here, we've got the window controls for it and stuff, but the top title bar isn't liking it. So we're going to go back to theme and go back to ambience for now. Just so it likes us, you can get more themes at some point. Then you can change the icon themes. You can see over here on the left hand side, they are changing based on what I choose. So that's pretty cool. And I like the icons entirely system wide change, which is really, really neat. White glass. I like Breeze. We're going to go with Breeze for now. You can change the cursor. DMZ Black is what I usually like. Got handhelds, the thing's tiny. Red glass, white glass. We're going to go DMZ Black for now and use large cursors. Yeah, that didn't seem to make it much bigger though. You can change the fonts. We're not going to worry about that. But you can change the fonts. This is good if you're having trouble reading on your system. Desktop icons, you can... By default, these are disabled now in Ubuntu, but you can turn them on. Make it look kind of like OS X. That's kind of cool. Security. Uh, you can disable certain settings. You can disable, you know, users from logging out or user switching. This is good if you're setting this up for someone else and you don't want them screwing with it. Disable locking. Disable printing entirely. Effect scroll bar behavior. I'm just going to leave it on overlay. Default two finger scrolling. And that's it for Ubuntu Tweak Tool. And that is a general overview. I'm going to log out and log back in again. <laughs> there we go. And see now we have the Home, network servers, and trash icons. The only problem with moving the menu bars up here to this top title bar is when it's maximized. The window controls go there. Saves you some some like windows with some screen space, screen real estate. But it makes it more confusing when you're trying to figure out where to click. But that is it for Ubuntu 16.04 customization. This was a very long video, but there's a lot to it. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash that like button. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. Check the link in the description below for more Ubuntu 16.4 since the ah, wow, 16.04 tips. My name is Ben Adam Marie Vox, and I will catch you in the next one.